Can West Brom do what only Sheffield United have managed to do in the past 24 games and beat Burnley? Burnley are tearing away at the top of the championship. The Clarets are on a run of seven straight wins going back to before the World Cup and have won an absurdly good 11 out of their last 12 league games, giving them a 16-point promotion cushion down to third place Watford with just 19 games remaining. At the moment, yes, Burnley do look pretty unbeatable, but over the past 10 games in the championship, one team can actually match Burnley's incredible form. That team is West Bromwich Albion and the two sides meet in a potentially fascinating Friday night encounter at Turf Moor. The big difference between Burnley and West Brom this season obviously revolves around the failed start to the season for the Baggies under Steve Bruce. Burnley had their transformational managerial arrival in the summer with the appointment of Vincent Company. West Brom's took place with the arrival of Carlos Corberon in late October. It is very much not a coincidence that the run of nine wins in 10 championship games, the Baggies are all of a sudden on, started six days after Corberon joined as manager. Not only have West Brom been winning with great frequency, but they've also kept clean sheets in seven of those nine victories. So can West Brom do what only Sheffield United have managed to do in the past 24 games and beat Burnley. Well, as we've just pointed out, it's over half a season with just the one defeat for Burnley. I was there for the other one at Watford back on August the 12th. Those people with a working knowledge of the current championship table will realise that means two things. Firstly, Burnley are undefeated at home all season. And secondly, their only two defeats have come away at the teams currently second and third in the championship table. Right, I'm sure you don't need me to labour the point anymore. Burnley are very good. They're very settled with eight players on 20 or more starts. That being Keeper, Murich, the two fullbacks, Roberts and Martson. The entire midfield trio of Cork, Cullen and Brownhill. And that focal point up top... Jay Rodriguez. Now, centre-back Taylor Harwood-Bellis is also in that category, but was not around for the last game. Charlie Taylor, normally a fullback, partnering Jordan Bayer in the centre of their defence. Clarets have also got lovely options in those inside forward positions with Teller and Benson on double figures for goal contributions, both of them. And Zaruri, not long back, from the World Cup. But look, West Brom are on a very good run of their own and as a fellow parachute team would probably like to think that their level of player isn't in a totally different ballpark to that of Burnley. The Baggies clean sheet count lately would also intimate that they might be able to cope better than most with that Burnley attack which has scored a stunning 53 goals from just 39 and a half XG. Now West Brom generally had the majority of the ball in their games, but Burnley do top the division for average possession. That is okay, I think, for the Baggies though, as Carlos Corberon's Huddersfield last season were very, very good at adopting a safety first outlook on their way to that playoff final appearance. Corberon lined up with Darnell Furlong and Connor Townsend at fullbacks last time. They will have a big job on their hands, keeping their eye on those Burnley inside forwards. You'd also imagine that screen of Malumbi and Yukuslu in central midfield would have a big role in stopping overloads from the many, many other players Burnley are gonna bring up into the attack from the central midfield and fullback positions. What we do know though, is that if West Brom can provide a solid base in that back sort of six or seven, they definitely have the quality in the final third to go and grab themselves a goal or maybe more. Matt Phillips is a seasoned direct runner and long range shooter. John Swift, well he can unlock a defense 
from open play or a set piece. And Jed Wallace just loves getting down that wing to either shoot or cross. Up top, Daryl DK is, fingers crossed for him, now free from injury. He's appeared in each of the last seven championship games, starting four of them and registering himself for goal contributions. Remember, as well, it wasn't the first choice centre-back pairing for Burnley last time out. And DK is the sort of figure you need to be at your best to stop. It seems all set up to be an absolute scorcher between two massively in-form sides in the Championship. Maybe it would be even more nicely poised if Burnley were playing away. And so, I suspect one of two outcomes will happen. Either we'll get, as I've kind of laid out, a highly competitive West Brom, maybe slightly sitting in and waiting for their moment and giving us a super tight game. Or Burnley might just affirm what we think we already know about them and sweep away even a powerful opponent such as West Brom. Now, if only there was somewhere on this channel that I'd made a prediction for this game. Well, if you want one, click up here to see myself and BBC Squad Goals reporter Sani Rudravagula attempt to predict the outcome of each and every game in this coming championship round.